In a previous video, I discussed the fact that all of our bones can be classified into just five different categories based on their shape. Long bones, short bones, flat bones, irregular bones, and sesamoid bones. In this video, I'll discuss the anatomy of a typical long bone, like for example, the humerus. Let's first look at the external anatomy of a long bone. The elongated central part of a long bone is called the diaphysis. At each end of the diaphysis is an enlarged area of bone known as the epiphysis. The diaphysis is connected to the epiphysis by a thin segment of bone known as the metaphysis. The surfaces of the epiphyses, where bones form a joint, are covered with a thin layer of articular cartilage. Articular cartilage reduces friction and absorbs shock when bones move in a joint. The rest of the external surface of a long bone is covered with periosteum, a tough connective tissue sheath. The periosteum is divided into two layers, an outer fibrous layer of dense irregular connective tissue that protects bone and an inner osteogenic layer that contains bone forming cells. If we cut the humerus in half lengthwise, we can examine the internal anatomy of a long bone. The wall of the diaphysis is made of dense or compact bone. Compact bone is incredibly strong and protects and supports bone. Lining the inside of the compact bone is a thin membrane called the endosteum. It contains bone forming cells as well as some connective tissue. The hollow cylindrical space in the middle of the diaphysis is called the medullary cavity. In an adult this cavity is filled with yellow bone marrow which is mostly made of fat cells. The epiphyses are made of spongy bone, which is lightweight and made of a lattice work of irregular sheets of bone called trabeculae. Filling the spaces between these trabeculae is red bone marrow. Red bone marrow is mostly composed of developing red and white blood cells and platelets. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for more Human Biology Explained videos.